students welcome to sarans biology a channel that is dedicated for better preparation of cbs examination and support for neat examinations today as a part of our initiative we are going to talk about a very important chapter from unit number 1 in class 12th that is human reproduction the chapter forms important component in terms of question that comes in cbs examination as well as neat examination so let us begin this chapter has been subdivided into sub sub parts and as a result we are going to discuss about the male reproductive system in today's lecture so in general when we talk about reproduction reproduction includes set of activities because continuation of species is a function of reproduction and as you have already seen reproduction can be of two types sexual and asexual asexual reproduction that's a general method resorted by lower organism where the offspring produced are unique and uh, identical but variation is the key feature that leads to evolution so for variation the organism has resorted to sexual mode of reproduction or in simple word we can call it biparental mode of reproduction where we find two parents and specialized cells haploid cells called as gametes these gametes come together bring the genetic character and fuse to form the zygote which in turn develops into the embryo so in case of human being we can look into this aspect in terms of several steps humans are viviparous and sexually dimorphic isn't it you can differentiate between a male and female based on the external genitalia also they are different in terms of chromosomal constitution male has got allosomes or uh, x y chromosomes a part of autosomes whereas female has got xx chromosome so in this chapter we will be talking about the structural organization of male and female reproductive system so when we talk about the human reproduction it can be subdivided into certain segments which are gametogenesis production of specialized cells or gametes insemination once gametes are being formed they have to be transported right just as you have seen in case of plant uh, the pollination took place then event of fertilization which results in the mixing of the genetic uh, components afterwards zygote formation takes place and uh, then it uh, leads to cleavage then implantation and as implantation takes place you need to establish a physiological connection anatomical connection between the embryo and the yeah. mother and that is called as placentation then the period of gestation the whole growth period and ultimately the delivery that results in the uh, coming of the baby to the world so that comes under parturition these are certain components as you can look into the graphical representation here out the gametogenesis the formation of male gamete comes under spermatogenesis whereas the formation of female gamete comes under oogenesis the female gamete happens to be the ovum and male gamete happens to be the sperm the event of insemination uh then we look into the fertilization the cleavage the implantation placentation gestation and parturition today we'll be talking about the male reproductive system how is it arranged you know male reproductive system is arranged in the pelvic region it consists of a pair of testes as you can find here out testes the singular and when we uh, write testes then it is a plural so a pair of testes it's extra abdominal uh, accessory ducts duct that ensures transportation of uh, sperm there are some accessory gland sperm does not itself constitute the semen it is added by certain glands and then it forms a semen which is required for activation of sperm and uh, fertilization and the external genitalia the one which 
ensures insemination or passage of the semen to the female reproductive tract. The frontal view suggests this is the testis, one on either side of the penis and uh, the duct that arising out of it. There is a structure here out epididymis, then the vas difference and the vas difference runs back and it connects to the seminal vesicle forming the ejaculatory duct and then the urethra continues in the penis. You can find here out some ducts are there, prostate gland, a big chestnut size uh, gland here out, then some smaller glands, the bulbourethral gland, right, and of course, seminal vesicle also secretes and uh, constitutes part of semen. So this is the frontal view. You must practice from diagrammatic perspective and uh, the accessory external genitalia is a penis. So when we talk about testis, uh, it hangs from uh, the abdominal cavity with the help of spermatic cord and testis as such, it is located outside the abdominal cavity, right? So it is extra abdominal. Why it is extra abdominal? We will just come to know about it in a minute or so. We will talk about how the testis is located. The testis is a spermatic cord when we talk about the abdominal cavity. And this spermatic cord is made up of certain covering, certain layers, which we call tunica. And in that you will see the spermatic veins, the testicular arteries, this is a whole connection. Like you can see the casing of the wire as you can see the wire casing. Wire is protected under casing. So, this spermatic cord is just like a casing, right? So, spermatic cord is made up of certain layers. We will be talking about these layers, which you call the different layer, the tunica vaginalis, the tunica albuginia, and tunica vasculosa. We will talk about them. So, as I have already mentioned, the testis is extra abdominal. यानी कि एब्डोमिन से बाहर है ऐसा क्यों होता है? Why because testes are called as spermaries or production of sperm takes place in testes. So this process requires a temperature of around 35 degrees, 35 to 35 and half degrees. So this is not possible inside the body. To provide a temperature which is two to three degree less from the body temperature. For production of viable sperm, that's why these structures, the testis, hangs outside in a structure called as scrotum. As far as the size of uh, testis is concerned, uh, each testis measures around four to five centimeter in length. Up length ki baat karne, four se five centimeter, or two se three centimeter width, or karibun one centimeter se two centimeter in ki thickness. Individual weight uh, is around 12 grams per testis. Baat kar lije inki covering ki. Sab se pehle jo bahar ki covering hai. The outer one. Which is called as tunica vaginalis. Ye ek flat disc like structure hai. Which is located on uh, the only one side. Aap dekhe yaha pe it is located only on the one side. Right. And it is made up of two layers. One parietal layer and one visceral layer. And in between there is a cavity. This cavity is filled with fluid. So it helps in gliding of testis. Maybe it, it, it acts like a shock absorber, right? So this is the one covering tunica vaginalis. Then comes the second layer, the tunica albuginia. This can be called as the real protective covering, right? Made up of the fibrous tissues. And this tunica vaginalis makes septum inside the testis, which contains seminiferous tubule right and then comes a bundle of loose connective tissues here out, containing blood vessels which makes tunica vasculosa right 
So these are the three layers, three covering uh, that makes up the spermatic cord as well. So as far as the structure of testis is concerned, there are around 250 compartments. You can see here, these are small compartments. So what makes this small compartment? Tunica albuginea, right? Tunica albuginea. This makes the small compartment and uh, uh, this uh, forms testicular lobule and these lobules are the actual site of production of sperm. You can find out here, you can clearly see it in this uh, diagram illustration. These are uh, the seminiferous tubule and they try to come out forms a network of tubule called as retitestis and retitestis comes out from uh, in the form of efferent ductules which forms epididymis. So epididymis is also regenerated. It forms a head region, the body region and the tail region. region. Right? So and ultimately this leads out through Vasa difference that we will be talking about. Now, when seminiferous tubules are sectioned, right? So what structure do you see? Because these tubules are responsible for production of sperm, right? The tubules are lined by two types of cells. You can find here out two types of cells are there, right? One are the bigger cells, the pyramidal cells called as Sertoli cells. You can see here out. These are the Sertoli cells, the larger ones, right? They are also called as nurse cell. Uh, this is the picture of Enrico Sertoli, the Italian uh, histologist, after whom the cell has been named. Sertoli cells produces spermatogenic substances that helps in nursing and nurturing of the sperm, right? So nourishment of sperm is also taken care by these cells. So taking care, that's why it's named as nurse cells. It is also called as nurse cells. These cells are very, very special because it produces two things, androgen binding protein, ABP and inhibin, right? So androgen binding protein, because uh, we'll read here out, these Sertoli cells, they're also site of spermatogenesis. So androgen which happens to be testosterone that has to be concentrated and this concentration work is done by androgen binding protein right it also secretes inhibin which regulates the secretion of fsh fsh is follicle stimulating hormone uh, which is released from the pituitary so pituitary gland is under the regulation by inhibin right then you find uh, these are germinal epithelium cells which are actually source for production of sperms right and once you find this seminiferous tubules in between them there are also special cells group of cells which are called as interstitial cell interstitium as you know the space between two compartments you try and put some marble uh, in a glass and you will find uh, you can still add some more uh, you know substance maybe uh, some sand in it why because when this marble come together in between they form some space called as interstitial sp uh, space you can see here out so these cells are called as lady cells and they produce testosterone and they are also under control of uh, the pituitary forms luteinizing hormone. Luteinizing hormone controls the activity of these uh, interstitial cells or uh, Leydig cells. So once you look into it, you'll find germinal epithelium and Sertoli cells inside the seminiferous tubule and in the spaces in between these tubules, you find interstitial cells. So the sectional view of uh, seminiferous tubule is very, very important. Even uh, you need to practice this once and once or twice uh, because in examination it is being frequently asked. 
Let us enlarge these seminiferous tubules. How does it look like? So when you take an enlarged view, maybe uh, you can look around. There is a covering as you have already seen the covering uh, of the testis and the septal covering made by uh, tunica albuginea right at the base you find two types of cells the spermatogonial cells spermatogonium and the sertoli cells the pyramidal bigger ones right you can also find the different stages of uh, formation of sperm you will find uh, primary spermatocyte, secondary spermatocyte, spermatid and spermatozoa. We will talk about all the cells in spermatogenesis. Well, but just to give you an outline, spermatogonial cells, they produce uh, primary spermatocyte by mitosis. So they are deployed, even spermatogonial cells are deployed and meiosis takes place in this primary spermatocyte. So it forms secondary spermatocyte, which now becomes haploid because after first meiotic division the chromosome number is halved and uh, then it forms spermatids by the virtue of second meiotic division uh, which produces spermatids so four spermatids are produced as a result of uh, meiosis and spermatids now undergoes some modification so it forms spermatozoa so the process overall process is called as spermatogenesis and uh, the process of uh, making of uh, spermat uh, tojoa from spermatid is called as spermiogenesis. The two terms we will be talking in details about these two processes spermatogenesis and uh, spermiogenesis. So you can clearly identify here out uh, the two cells, the spermatogonial cells and the sertoli cells. If you look at the precedence and sequence as I have discussed, Spermatogonial cells give rise to primary spermatocyte, then meiosis takes place which forms secondary spermatocyte, continues to form spermatids and then by the process of spermiogenesis, spermatozoa is formed. So this is how the enlarged view of seminiferous tubule looks like. Now we talk about this accessory duct because we have now made or uh, sperms are being made they need to be transported out. So a duct system is there, the finest duct. From the tubule, you find all the uh, uh, ducts that arises, all tubule arising from testis, it forms a rated testis. This is the first part. It forms a rated testis and rated testis forms the efferent duct, which is called as vasa efferentia, right? Vasa efferentia which unites to form uh, epididymis, long coil tubule, which is, it, it is a site of storage of sperm and also provide nutrition to sperm until they have matured. And these epididymis, it has originated into head, body and tail. And then it moves out through a long uh, duct around 30 to 35 centimeter long called as vas difference. Right? And vas deferens now forms uh, 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 ejaculatory duct. How? Because now it joins with the duct from the prostate um, uh, urethra. From urinary bladder you find the duct comes and it joins to form ejaculatory duct. Right? And which continues, the urethra continues we will find that urethra can also be now uh, regenerated because urethra is arising from urinary bladder right so some part of the urethra before uh, joining this reproductive system it is called as uh, urinary urethra then we have got a gland here out prostate gland at the level of which the joining takes place to form ejaculatory duct it is called as prostatic urethra then some uncovered portion you find here out which is called as membranous urethra which receives you know duct uh, from uh, accessory glands like bulbo urethral gland and then it enters into the penis 
forming penile urethra. Penile urethra being the longest of all. And you find there are two pair of sphincters, internal sphincter here out, just before entering the reproductive system. It is internal sphincter, it is uh, uh, autonomic, involuntary, I should say. And then you have got uh, external sphincter, which is voluntary in nature. Now we should talk about the accessory gland because sperm production has taken place, but yet not it is functional to make it functional and to ensure that it reaches the destination for fertilization. It needs secretion of certain gland for the purpose of maturation or capacitation and also for the purpose of nutrition. So this gland includes the seminal vesicle as you can look into they lead to this secular structure called as seminal vesicle, right? They are paired and elongated around 5 cm in length. It lies in between pelvis, uh, lying in the pelvic region between rectum and the urinary bladder. It secretes a fluid which is around uh, 7.4 pH, which is the body pH and contains substance like fructose, prostaglandinin, and clotting proteins. The major function is to neutralize the acidity in the male urethra as well as the vaginal tract. It forms around 60% of the semen. So 60% of semen is contributed by seminal vesicle. Right? The other components are prosemenogelin, water, vitamin C and fructose is the nutrition substance for the sperm. Then the largest gland, the chestnut shepherd gland which is called as a prostate gland prostate gland at just at this level there is the union of urethra with that of um, vas deferens vas deferens and urethra that forms ejaculatory duct so prostate also contributes with some fluid around 30 percent of the semen is derived from the prostate gland. It contains enzyme for activating uh, prosiminogelin and clot liquefying enzymes like serine proteases, PSA and water. It contains citric acid and other enzymes as well. The pH is slightly acidic 6.5. Then at the bottom you can find some specialized small glands, a pair of small glands called as bulboureteral gland. They are also called as Cowper's gland. This copper gland produces a slightly alkaline fluid which contains more of mucus and the major function is to provide lubrication during the sexual intercourse. So accessory gland and then we talk about the external genitalia which delivers or which inseminates or transfer the sperm or semen into female reproductive tract. It is the penis, the muscular structure. It serves the dual function that is uh, it also serves the role of urinal duct right it is made up of some columns of tissues and there is no erectile bone inside during copulation it facilitates insemination and also passage for urine so this was all about the structural organization of male reproductive system Let's quickly look what we have studied so far. The primary sex organ being the testis. That means a pair of testis is uh, found in the male and it is located extra abdominally inside uh, the scrotum. So the production of sperm takes place. So it's basically two roles that it plays. It produces sperm as well as it produces some hormones. As we have seen, the lady cell produces testosterone. So it has got endocrine role as well. Then comes the accessory duct, which is made up of rated testis, vas afferentia, epididymis, vas deferens, ejaculatory duct, and urethra. And in between, to make semen, there are some glands which are called as accessory glands. These glands include seminal vesicle, prostate gland and bulbo urethral gland or 
corpus gland and the external genitalia or the penis so this is what you should actually keep in mind when you are answering any question from male attractive system let's look at few questions sample questions from the board examination that cbc asks a draw label diagram to show interrelationship of four accessory ducts in human male reproductive system so you need to talk about the four accessory ducts here out and uh, draw a diagram of sectional view of human seminiferous vestibule and label in a six part out of it so these are important from diagrammatic perspective well uh, this was what we had for you in this uh, lecture in the coming ones we'll be talking about the organization of female reproductive system how it is organized and uh, then after we'll be talking about some other issues like gametogenesis and in subsequent part we'll be talking in details about the other points that we have discussed till now read your ncert text carefully and you can also uh, write in the comment box what additional help you need for notes and other material also you can request which will be provided to you on your mail till then happy reading and uh, keep watching the channel you can subscribe the channel to get notification so that i can uh, make more videos based on your feedback till then take care students keep ahead of your friend by subscribing the channel and hit the bell icon to get notified if there is a new video coming your way